Moto Race from George. That was the best race that George Russell has ever had, hands down. Uh, best win he's ever had. That was amazing. He made those hard tires last that long. And I'm surprised that there were more, weren't more teams that tried that out. They pitted Lando so late in his first stop that they could have done that with Lando and potentially, I think, not held off Piastri and Hamilton, but probably finished ahead of Leclerc for fourth place. But they didn't, and they suffered for it. But yeah, great uh, great win from uh, Russell. Great win from both of them. The Mercs. This just in. Um, Russell has been called to the stewards. So after the race, car number 63, which is George Russell, was weighed, and its weight is 798, which is the minimum required. But after this, the fuel was drained out of the car, and 2.8 liters of fuel were removed. The car is not fully drained according to the draining procedures submitted by the team in their legality documents in whatever article. The car was weighed again by the FIA in and outside of the scales, and the weight was underweight. Not by a little bit. Yeah, like 1.5 kilograms, which is, that's a lot. That's, that's like five pounds or so. The calibration of the outside and inside scales was confirmed and witnessed by a by the competitor. This is 1.5 below the minimum weight, which has to be respected at all times during the competition. This is going to the stewards. This to me, this is a disqualification. Like pretty much locked down. What are they gonna say really? Oh, we didn't know that the, it doesn't matter what they say really. If the car is underweight, the car is underweight and is disqualified from competition. I knew it. I knew this some sort of thing would happen and you know why? Because I bet you they were missing more of the barge board than they were expected to. That extra wear might have something to do with it. But either way, man, they just lost first place for Russell. So it'll end up being Hamilton, Piastri, Claire on podium. Huh, that's good. Matt from P1 will be happy. I uh, just wanted to pop that in there. It only came out just a few seconds ago. Not what we saw on Friday practice at all. They looked, whatever they did, and I don't think it's necessarily what they, they did. I think they kept their, what they tuned in the car the same. I think, I think the McLarens put too much into the straight line speed, which we saw in some other race series if you watch them, didn't help anybody out. Being really slippy in the straights was not the way to be. Um, that middle sector where Max Verstappen is very fast, obviously, is where you want to be with the uh, with the timings there. So let's take a look at classifications. So uh, overall, from P1 to P10, Russell, Hamilton, Piastri, Leclerc, Verstappen, Norris, Sainz, Perez, Alonso, and Ocon. The biggest ones for me here are Esteban Ocon. The Alpines were rapid through most of, if not all, the lap. On Friday, they were really fast in the first sector. But in the race, they were really fast in pretty much every sector. I think Fernando Alonso was lucky to finish ahead of Esteban Ocon uh, because he was just flying through the field the whole race. So much for Pierre Gasly, but that uh, might be down to talent maybe? I'm not sure. I can't, it's hard to tell what's going on with that team. They're not really all that uh, good right now. But uh, fairly standard Formula A versus Formula B. You can see the gap between Fernando Alonso and Sergio Perez, and Sergio pitted early for the fastest lap, so really Sergio was kind of more like 20-some seconds ahead of Fernando Alonso. So yeah, a different split of the grid there, but speaking of uh, Red Bull, they did not fly through uh, the pack like we thought we did. They weren't as fast, just like uh, McLaren weren't as fast. So Max started P11, only finishing P5, and he really caught, caught in a DRS train. I really thought, if you watched, watched the supporting races in F3 and F2, uh, the DRS was very, very strong. But those cars drive quite a few kilometers less and uh, are, are much slower, so that straight is much longer for them because they spend a longer time on it. And it seems like those cars really, if you watched F2, it was all the time dives into that uh, chicane following the Radion straight, or the straight after Radion. So it's like, it just seems like kind of a DRS train uh, with a lot of the drivers. Sainz got by Perez in the later stages in the race with about 0.45 tenths faster or uh, four or five tenths behind Perez. And then you saw Lando couldn't get by Max uh, with about half a second there. So as same with uh, Hamilton, couldn't get by Russell at the very end. And he still, he was 
within touching distance, but you really had to be quite slippy in a straight line and have that good run out of the first corner. So that was, uh, we'll go over Perez in a little bit because I want to talk about him and his race. So uh, McLaren, again, pretty good result. They, they finished mostly where they started. Good to see Oscar on the podium again. He is very strong and he was one lap away from finishing first. I fully believe that he could have got by both of those guys. And in fact, if Mercedes had a scrapped more and Lewis had been more kind of like brutal on the break trying to get by Russell, I think Piastri would have won. It was so close at the end there. Uh, but good result from them. Lando, eh, kind of nowhere. He had a bad start at the first and then never really recovered from that. His strategy was weird. He pitted late in the first stint and then had a tire advantage, caught back up to everybody, obviously, because that McLaren is pretty good on its hard tires, but never really made anything of it. He didn't use that offset to any sort of advantage. And with that offset, he probably could have done a George Russell and finished there or thereabouts the podium at the very end had they kept on the hard tires. But that was kind of like a Hail Mary thing from Russell. Uh, he just called that all on its own. There was no strategy for Mercedes at all. That was all Russell. And it just goes to show that Russell really does understand the tires. Remind me of kind of like Carlos Sainz when he was drawing uh, Norris behind him with a DRS. That was a, quite a while ago. And he was using DRS to block Max behind and just kind of keeping them uh, like that. A very smart thing to do. Uh, something we don't not necessarily really smart calls uh, during the race from Russell we see a lot but smart calls as far as tires go it's several times in the past he's gone long stints on those hard tires I think at Williams as well he was quite good at that okay so uh, I had mentioned barge boards um, this if you look in the distance of this picture all that dust in the background no nobody's gone off and nobody's on fire those are the barge boards this is a, a, the first lap under high fuel all the wear you're seeing from this here it's crazy amount of wear. Uh, they haven't done scrutineering yet, and I mentioned in my race preview that I thought the FIA should scrutineer every bloody car for their barge boards, because I can almost guarantee there's somebody here. I don't know who it is, but there's gotta be somebody here that has a barge board that's out of spec for the end of the race. I would suggest it's probably the Red Bulls. Uh, they had mentioned during the race, and you could watch the onboards, Red Bull was lifting through Eau Rouge, and that's not because of speed or trying to save the tires or anything, they're trying to save their barge board, <laughs> which is like a weird thing to say. So let's talk about Perez. So Perez started second, finished eighth. And this kind of bleeds in a little bit to um, Norris's talks as well, which we'll get into. But what they did with Perez is they sacrificed him several times throughout the race. And they did that to kind of help Max make his way through the field. And it's really that dichotomy that you have between McLaren and Red Bull and how they treat their drivers. Red Bull obviously have a number one driver and a number two driver, and McLaren don't. Although, in my opinion, I think Norris is the number one, that he's been there for so much longer. But they treat them very much equal. And we saw that last race at Hungary and again at this race, where Red Bull are just more ruthless with their driver pairing. And first of all, they put Perez on the medium tire in the middle stint, which pretty much nobody else did except for Sainz. So he started on mediums and then went to mediums and then went to hards. And the mediums was totally not the right tire to be on, which put him off sync. So he was spending no time in DRS trains, which is can be good, but he wasn't really fast enough to take advantage of that. And it put him out of sync for everything. So his everything else that everybody else was doing, he wasn't there to be a part of it. People were getting in his way when they shouldn't have been. People were passing him because he was on a different strategy. Um, so they sacrificed that and they did that so that when Max rocked up to him behind him um, in the second stint that they could just say, okay, time to box. And they did. That's exactly it. Time to box, Perez. You got to come in. Sorry, we're on different strategies. I know you really don't want to right now. So he was on those second set of mediums for like, I don't know, like nine laps or something like that. Way too short. And they boxed him in just to get him out of the way. So they wouldn't have to really give team orders. It was more like a forced kind of thing purposely put them on different strategies so that they didn't have to give team orders. And then when Max did rock up to him in the last stint, 
they just told him to get out of the bloody way. He was like, ah, oh, you're obviously way slower now. And again, you're on different strategies, so just get out of the way. And then they sacrificed him again by putting him under wrist to get the fastest lap because Norris had the fastest lap and they wanted to take that away from him. Uh, they weren't going to go any faster and that DRS train with uh, Verstappen, so he wasn't able to do it himself. So they sacrificed it again, and he came very, very close to Alonso at the end, getting passed by him. And it wouldn't have taken too much to see a mistake there and him finish even further down from eighth. So that wasn't the race for Perez. I don't think his qualifying was very good. He, he stepped it up when he needed to, but I don't think that was going to save him. And this man, Ricardo, did quite well in the race. He did lose out to Ocon at the end. He almost had 10th place. And if I think if he had 10th place, people would be really mentioning, oh, well, man, Ricardo only finished two places behind Perez. And he's like ninth is really the best Ricardo can do it, it, like on pace around here. He's not in Formula A. He's in Formula B. He's not Ferrari, McLaren, Red Bull or uh, Mercedes. So he ain't finishing in the top eight on pace alone. So really P10 was going to be a pretty good result for him. P11 is still pretty good, but I'd like to see more from him. And I, I think going into the summer break, we're going to have to have a big conversation about Perez because I don't think he's going to be in that team when we come back. Let's go to Alpine. Esteban Ocon, P10. Very, very good drive from Esteban. He passed Gasly and Magnussen and Hulkenberg and Stroll and uh, Ricardo and uh, like, oh, he was doing amazing. All of his passes were through the chicane right after the long straight after Radion. So like it was a very slippery car and that's why they were able to do that. It's pretty much the only car that was even if it it was the only car that even if it was kind of a slower car it was fast enough in that first sector that they could get by but he had an awesome race let's talk about norris so this is norris coming into the last chicane this is after he caught max but before verstappen this is just as verstappen is catching uh leclerc he didn't have drs as of yet watch leclerc uh norris is, he just loses that end and this is why norris couldn't catch Verstappen throughout the almost the entire race again they pitted him really late and Verstappen undercut him I think Verstappen might have just passed him on pace alone just because of this he was getting no drive in through the slow corners we saw this a little bit from Piastri too but more from Norris and I believe that they went for a uh, much they thought that they were already good in the middle sector of the track and you saw that in uh, free practice one and two on the Friday that they were really, really quick, especially free practice too. They were really quick in the middle sector, so I think they thought, we're already quick there. Let's slip the car up a little bit. Let's take some notches out of the wings and let's make it a little bit more slippy to try to get able to get by in, in through Eau Rouge and Radion. But the thing is, is that he couldn't get the drive out of this last corner to even get close to anybody to make a pass. So I think they really messed up with the setup on both Piastri and Norris, but I think Norris went for an even more extreme version of that. And that's why he really couldn't make any headway. You saw when uh, Piastri went out of the hard tire, he was closing up those Mercs by almost a second a lap. And Norris is really, when he was closing up to Verstappen, it was fast, but it was more like six or seven tenths. And it was all through this last corner. And all Max had to do was turn on the race pace and use up his tires which the mediums could still handle it and he couldn't get by and that was mclaren's move really what happened here for for these guys let me go back to the actual thing is what we saw from hungary versus what we saw here from red bull so we saw hungary mclaren just don't know who their top driver is and they suffered for it and of the points that uh, Lando could have acquired there, he missed out on it because he did not get those extra points for finishing first. And you saw what Red Bull did to Perez here. They treated him dirty. They treat him like a number two driver that was never ever going to finish higher than Max Verstappen. Max finished three places ahead of Perez and started nine places behind him. Now, they sacrificed him, but they already know that he's slow. So, and they know that Max, Max even said himself, and he said it instantly. He didn't even have to think about it. They were like, can Lando catch you by the end of the year? And he goes, oh yeah. Before they even finished the sentence, he was like, yeah, absolutely. He totally can. There's a, uh, the, cha the driver championship is 100% on and we need to step up our game. And they did. And McLaren didn't last race. And again, this race, they didn't. You don't see them 
Like, who is winning more other than Merck? <laughs> Oscar Piastri is. He's just doing a better job. But he didn't at the first of the season, so he's they're just kind of doing what all has gone along here. They've let Max fly ahead. And um, it's their own fault, really. Pretty sad. Uh, but overall, kind of a boring race. Usually Spa is kind of rain-affected a little bit more and, and not so... It was a good crescendo at the end to see everybody catching up. And it's lovely to see the Mercs back in the mix of it. They, and they're on pace, too. They were just playing fast, especially on the medium tires. They were quite quick. So, uh, interesting to see. A uh, good race. I think we're going to do a fallout video and go into more detail on what we think is going to happen on the summer break. Uh, four weeks out to the next uh, race, which is quite a long time. I'll be going back to regular um, iRacing kind of stuff while we wait. I might do a couple little videos on uh, on Formula One during that, but nothing too crazy. Enjoy uh, your summer break. Subscribe if you're new. Throw me a like if you got a second, and I'll see you guys next time.